Afternoon, guys. Okay, or happy lunchtime, I guess, if you will. So, uh, y'all probably know what is going on as we speak here. The summit between Potato Joe and Vladimir Putin is going on. Now, there's been some interesting things that have been said. Uh, again, we've talked wag the dog and everything about is the media trying to start a war? Does Joe want to start a war, you know, to fix the economy or whatever it is? Very possible. Okay. But, so we've got this meeting going on as we speak here, as I'm recording this, which is about quarter to 12. Now, I'm not going to say anything along the lines of, yes, I know Putin's going to invade Russia, okay? They, the Russians have come out and said they're not going to do it. Or, I'm sorry, they're not going to invade Ukraine. Sorry, invade Russia. <laughs> yeah, another cup of coffee. Uh, in, in some respects, you got to take him for his word. I've said many times, I totally agree that, hey, wherever the hell they want to amass troops, if it's right on the border, I mean, this is 200 miles away, but if it's right on the border, who cares? It's Russian sovereign territory. Like I said many times, we could put all sorts of units down in Miami. And, you know, whatever the Cubans say, tough. Okay, it's still our sovereign territory. But this is where this meeting's supposed to discuss things. Now, we're never going to know exactly what comes out of this meeting. You know that, I know that, everybody knows that, because the White House is only going to release so much to the press, and then the press is going to spin it however they want to spin it. So what we have to do, as usual, is look at the scenarios, read between the lines, and figure out what's going on. So here's where the issues come into play, and the reason that Ukraine is a hot button right now. Ukraine is a buffer between Russia and Western Europe. What Russia does not want is Ukraine to become part of NATO, because then you have NATO right on the Russian border. Russia will never be part of NATO. Okay, that's pretty much a given. They don't want literally NATO troops to be, you know, and I kid you not with this distance, you could have Russian troops right here and NATO troops right here, that far apart. The border goes right between the middle. That's what Russia doesn't want. Now, you can't blame them for that. I don't disagree whatsoever. However, it's not Russia's place to dictate to Ukraine how they run their own country. If Ukraine wants to be part of NATO and NATO wants to assimilate Ukraine into NATO, that's perfectly fine. Russia is trying to go back to the treaties after World War II, where, though it was never written, it was verbally said that NATO would never expand further eastward. So that's what Russia is saying. You know, NATO said they wouldn't expand further eastward, and now you're trying to expand further eastward. Show us in writing. Well, it's not in writing, okay? You're not going to bring the guys who made that those comments together and say, oh yeah, I promised them this. So that's where we get into this issue with Ukraine. Where it gets even worse, okay, is then you get the bluster coming back from Biden saying that if Russia does do anything, go into Ukraine, right? You have the two territories right on the border that want to separate from Ukraine and become part of Russia, kind of like Crimea wanted to become part of Russia again. You know, the rest of the world didn't acknowledge it, but the people there wanted to, you know. And don't get me started on the people in western Washington who want to become part of Idaho. It's kind of like the same thing. Uh, you know, the governments just won't let you do it. But that's what they want. But... So then you get Biden coming up with the, the threat of, all right, if Russia goes into Ukraine, huge hypothetical here, if, okay? So this is the threat from the United States to Russia. 
that the United States will cut Russia out of SWIFT. And if you're familiar with what SWIFT is, SWIFT is the electronic transfer of funds. Okay, so, you know, you run your credit card you know, put your credit card into Amazon or whatever, and it goes through the automated system and Amazon gets paid. That's basically what it is. So it would cut Russia off from the world from international financial transactions, which would be devastating to an economy, no question. However, then you get the other response from Russia. If you do that, it's going to be a cold winter in Western Europe, because the majority of the gas, natural gas, that goes into Western Europe, that heats uh, Western Europe, comes from Russia. You know, Nord Stream 2 is not the only pipeline, guys. There's about a half a dozen of them, okay, that, you know, go down to Italy, go to, uh, you know, Germany, whatever it would be. I mean, it's not just one pipeline and then everything goes from there. There's multiple pipelines. So this is kind of what the the whole conversation is about today. And again, a lot of people can say, well, the cards are all in, you know, Putin's one control. As long as he doesn't go into Ukraine, everything's fine. Okay, this is true. But then Russia's point of view on this is, well, as long as NATO doesn't go into Ukraine, everything's fine. That's where the issue comes in. Now, how does this affect all of us? You know, sure, war in any sort of capacity will affect us. I mean, you may have not realized it, but, you know, the war in Afghanistan for the last 20 years did affect us. Here's the latest. The Pentagon now wants private industry, U.S. manufacturers, to make their product, that the civilian product, okay, whatever it would be, you know, let's say it's shirts, belts, whatever it would be, not on, not only for the civilian world, but also under military specs, so it can be used in the military. Now, again, if you think about how this works, think of your GPS, think of Google Maps or whatever it is, okay, how GPS, GPS was actually engineered by NASA, and eventually it filtered its way down to use by the general public. A lot of things like that happen, okay? Styrofoam is something like that. Uh, memory foam, certainly, that, that was used in the space program as well, okay? There's a lot of things like that that have started in one and then have filtered down to the other. What the Biden administration wants to do now is take the civilian engineering and make it worth work work in a military aspect. That should be scary because why does the civilian world have to start making things to military specs? What does that mean is coming? Because again, you want to go back to World War II. Automotive plants, General Motors, Ford, whatever it was that were making Etzels, okay, all of a sudden started making airplane engines or tanks or whatever. That costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time. What is the preemptive thing that the government is trying to do now by having the civilian world already making military usable equipment. And again, think about what it could be. You know, as we call them battle belts, okay? An LBE or something like that, you know, uh, night optics, whatever. Ammunition, rifles, you name it, okay? This is where it gets concerning. Why does the government, our government, want Civilian, civilian manufacturers to start making things to military specs now. What, what is the reason? Could it be that they do see something happening with Russia, Ukraine, or China, Taiwan, either one, or who knows, Israel, Iraq, or Iran, I'm sorry, not Iraq, uh, 
it could be. Could it be prudent? Sure. Okay. But our job as Americans and as preppers is to think of all, all possibilities, not just the ones they want us to think about. Okay. Not, you know, everybody say, oh, that could be a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Well, right. Okay. So let's talk about all the conspiracy theories that we've seen over the last two years that, gee, miraculously, all were accurate. Okay. Just something to think about. But that's what's going on. If we find anything out, which like I said earlier, I don't see a whole lot of factual information coming out uh, between the Biden-Putin summit. Both sides will spin it to their uh, whims. And they'll, they'll both say, oh, it was very productive and we got along really well. All right. Again, you know, Putin's playing four-dimensional ch uh, chess and Biden's playing Chinese checkers. So uh, I don't see a whole lot of positive coming out of this, but that's what what is going on, what the discussions are. You know, that people don't know all of that. And I just kind of wanted to let you know that's where we stand. So, all right, guys, have a good afternoon. Good luck.